Hey, it's Matt C. Joined with Ryan Reynolds from the new movie, Definitely Maybe. Hello. Thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Tell me a little bit about the movie. It's sort of a hard movie to describe in yep. like a one-sentence blurb. So what's the premise? Um, well, you know, it's I, I like to describe it as a romantic whodunit. Um, although it is obviously a comedy, but uh, the, the the premise is is as follows: it's it's a it's a it's a man explaining to his daughter about his impending divorce, and she wants to know how I met mom. Right. And uh, you know, obviously, it's a very difficult thing. It's a minefield that most people try to n never have to navigate. But uh, I have to explain this to my daughter, and I say, well, look, I had three great loves in my life. I'm going to tell you the story of these three great loves. I'm going to change all the names and some of the facts, and you have to guess which one's your mom. So it becomes kind of this love story mystery game with her. Right. Oddly enough, being released on Valentine's Day. Yes. Indeed. Great date movie. Fantastic. I saw it. My wife absolutely flipped out over it. Oh, good. Yeah, she, she loved it. So what do you consider the ideal date movie? Um, you know, for me, the ideal date movie is a movie that, 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 that you can go to that both people walk away from having a blast. And, right. You know, I, um, I really do think that that... that this movie is obviously a bit different than most romantic comedies. Most romantic comedies really geared towards women. I think this one is obviously um, told from a guy's perspective, so it's sort of, I feel like it hits both both men and women in, in many different ways. Obviously, uh, uh, you know, when I read the script, I really felt like it was my life in a sense. Like I felt, I, I completely connected to everything this guy was going through. And obviously, you know, women are, are gonna love the, the, the romance, and the love story. Well, you have two co-stars that kind of run the gamut of acting experience. You've got Abigail Breslin, who's, who's been in a lot of movies of yes, late. Yes, a ton. Yeah. But, uh, she, you know, she's she's young. She's, what, like nine, maybe? She's, yeah, she was 10 when we shot. She's 11 years old now. Right. Just and then you let you forget that. Then you, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. 11 and a half. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and then you got Kevin Klein. Um, in the movie. So what did you learn from e to, from working with both of those actors? Is there a particular thing that you've learned from working with Abigail Breslin on yeah. the younger end and from Kevin Klein, who's been in the business forever? Well, you know, Abigail is at, at an age where, where, you know, you're just a perfect actor because she's so alive in every moment. I mean, she's just absolutely listening to everything that's happening. She has no agenda for the scene. And it's a great learning lesson. I mean, you see it and you kind of remember like, oh, yeah, that's how I was when I was a much younger actor just starting out. And you're you're really um, your, your your skills are actually more honed then than they ever need to be. Beyond that, it's a, it's incredible. And Kevin Klein, um, I learned a lot about Kevin Klein. One thing I learned about Kevin Klein is that he likes to walk around with his robe open. Um, <laughs> that uh, for me, I learned more than I needed to, to ever know about wow. Mr. Kevin Klein. But uh, I did I did see that uh, Kevin is actually a true master at his craft. I mean, he's a guy that uh, um, loves what he does, whether it's in stage, film mime doesn't matter i mean this guy just loves to perform so just gets uh, completely into it he is so into it and you know i think he's 60 years old or 59 years old and like has not lost a step i mean the funniest human being you'll ever meet in your life and he just kills and steals this entire film i have to ask you because i was doing research on you and if you go on those online bios mm -hmm. you never know what's true or not yeah so were there two there were two stories yeah. on there that i have to i have to hear about okay. one that involved jumping out of a plane yeah is that true that one is true, yes. What happened? Uh, I was, well, when I was younger and around 19, I, I decided that it would be a good idea to get my, not just learn how to skydive, but get my skydiving license. Uh -huh. um, I did uh, uh, 12 jumps, and then on my 13th jump, um, uh, it was a pretty long free fall type jump. I jumped out, and my chute didn't open. It opened, but it opened uh, the wrong way. Right. Uh, so it just put me into this crazy spin, you know, I uh, saw not just my life flash before my eyes, but oddly enough, Kevin Klein's. Right. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I, I managed to muster up the, the moxie to pull my reserve. It opened, tremendous, I landed, I, and it gave me a lifetime fear of flying after that point. So I still have a lot of trouble getting on an airplane. But you still fly, like you don't jump I have to. Bus. I'm not right. like John Madden. Right. No, I basically <laughs> have to fly everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So no, it's uh, uh, also the road kind of dips a bit on your way to London. So you have to fly over that part. And then the second story was about moving from Canada to L.A. Yeah. Um, it said the first night that you were there, your truck was stolen or your Jeep was stolen. Yeah, actually, that, that is true. My first uh, my first two hours in Los Angeles, my Jeep got stolen. Yeah, I, I pulled up in front of the, the, the CD motel that I was staying at. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking like really CD. It was 
right. held together by like flea blood. Pay by I the think hour. The entire kind of place thing. was yeah, it was nasty. Um, and uh, uh, I went in, I dropped my bags off, I came back out, and my jeep was gone. And then I immediately ran back in because I was convinced my bags would be gone too. Right. Um, but I did find my jeep like three blocks away, I think, without any doors. No doors. Or stereo or anything oh, else. Oh wow! Yeah. Cause, so stripped. That sucked. Essentially. Yeah, pretty much. What did you do? Just drive it around? I just drove around, no doors. With in no the door. middle of like El Nino, it was awful. Like every day, a tsunami would blow right through my jeep. Well, that probably take a good bit of perseverance not to just pack up and go home after the first two hours yeah there. but i mean i wasn't going to drive my jeep home because i live in canada right and you don't want to drive a jeep with no doors there either do you Freezing. live do you live in the states now yeah i do yeah. so you have a home here in like la or something yeah los angeles yeah so are you involved in the election at all like are you um, well, as much as I can be. I mean, I, I'm. Uh, I think it's it's critically important to be as informed as possible. I, I, look, I think that this this is this in election in particular is a, is a true sea change in in American politics. I think like um, I, I followed this like I would follow anything. I mean, I would like I'd follow the Super Bowl. I mean, right. And it feels like it's the Super Bowl every it does. week. I mean, I've never been so attentive to it. I mean, I'm hitting refresh on my computer every right. 10 minutes just Especially to see if there's today. any new news. Yeah. I'll yeah. Super Tuesday is huge. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's, it's massive. I mean, I couldn't be more involved. Well, let me ask you really quick, since we're talking about mm -hmm. politics, uh, coming from Canada is, uh, how is the healthcare system there? compared mm -hmm. compared to here like because you hear different sides you'll hear somebody say oh yeah they've got yeah. universal health care yeah, yeah but it's not it's, the same it's look i think um any kind of socialized health care is going to be a little bit better than, than people that are you know are massive quantities of the population that's out of without health care but um i think i think the picture is painted a little bit through a little bit more rose-colored lens than than is 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 required i think it's uh canada has its own issues with it and look socialized medicine is not a perfect system people need to remember that like it you know you go to uh, uh, an emergency room in in canada yes it's paid for but you know there's a there's a greater likelihood that you're going to wait you know a lot longer than you necessarily would well sure hear. so um they're trade-offs you know but uh yeah i think i think it's been painted in this really you know in this light that 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 says, suggests that it's this like benevolent system that needs to be universal all over the world and it's i don't know if that's necessarily true um i don't have no segue for this but how did you feel uh I was reading your bio, and the first thing in there says, Ryan Reynolds, one of people's most sexiest men alive for 2007. Wow, yeah. When you got that call, how did it feel? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, uh, I, like, I don't know how I would respond to that. Yeah, like, I don't. I honestly don't know how to respond. Still don't know how to respond to that. Um, you know, you uh, you try to sort of slough it off with a grain of salt, but at the same time, you you know, you really try to find some creative way to work it into every conversation you ever have for the rest of your life. Sure, like now. Right now. Exactly. I was going to work it in. I'm glad you brought it yeah, up. Yeah, you probably have it in your yeah. back pocket, and you're like, oh, by the way. Yeah, did you see oh, I dropped this? my <laughs> issue of people. You know what sucks about that, though, is that no matter what you are, if you're not like the the number one whatever head honcho, even if it's at pie making or something, uh, everybody asks who's number one. So really, it's just a segue to talk about Matt Damon. Oh, sure. Yeah. And who doesn't want to talk about exactly. Matt Damon? Who doesn't love Matt Damon? Right. I, but he's Matt Damon, not indefinitely maybe. No, he's definitely not indefinitely maybe. No. Definitely. No, but definitely maybe is good. Maybe. And it's <laughs> and it's uh, February 14th. February 14th. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds, thanks for hanging hey, out. My pleasure. Thank it's you. It's nice meeting you. All right. Nice meeting you too.